So now we've seen the central role that linear combinations play in linear algebra. Because after all, linear combination is the operation that makes vectors vectors. And vectors are the main objects that we study in linear algebra, regardless what guise we might meet them in. So now that we know that linear algebra is about solving linear systems because solving linear systems is about discovering which linear combinations of a given set of vectors produce another given vector. In other words, how do I make a B out of linear combinations of V1s, V2s? Now that we know that, it's finally time to enter the matrix. So in this video, we're going to take one step further past this and discover where it is that matrices fit into the story of linear algebra and get a little bit of a taste about how linear algebra works once we are letting matrices drive the engine. So up until this point, we've understood matrices mostly as just a means of bookkeeping, a way of keeping track of the coefficients in linear systems of equations in a way that will give us some tools to row reduce an augmented matrix, discover the parametric solution, and so forth. Um, and so to this point, what we've used a matrix for is just discovering how to solve a linear system, which we now understand means that we were using this matrix to discover what linear combination of these two columns minus 2, 1, and 3, 2, what linear combination of those two vectors will give us this third vector? And in this particular example, we do the row reduction, we find out the solution is 4, 2, and so what that tells me is that 4 of these plus 2 of those is going to give me that. So, so far, that's how you've been understanding matrices. There's more to the story, however. So, a way to summarize what I've just said is to say that linear systems of equations are really just how we're going to solve for the weights, the unknown weights, that make a linear combination of some set of vectors equal to some other vector. And our augmented matrix, the role of that augmented matrix was to hold those vectors in place. So our linear system is how we solve for what weights are going to make a linear combination of these vectors, the columns in the coefficient matrix, equal to this vector, the right-hand side of our equation, on the right side of the augment bar. And that linear combination is nothing more than scalars, which are unknown, so x and y is what I'm going to call them in this example, unknown scalars that we call the weights, multiplied by those vectors, and the results added together and set equal to that right-hand side. So when we're solving a linear system, we're just finding which linear combination we need in order to combine these two vectors into that one. So what's a matrix? Really, beyond a bookkeeping tool, what is a matrix going to do for us? And the key is to see a matrix as a way of representing linear combination, which we're beginning to understand is the operation that drives linear algebra. A matrix is a way to represent a linear combination as a single arithmetic act. Right now, linear combinations for us are kind of a combination of two things. They're a combination of scalar multiplication on the one hand and also addition on the other hand. And so there's kind of these two separate types of operations that seem like they need to work together. And a matrix is a way to make them work together. So what matrices do is that they represent that operation of linear combination as a single act of multiplication. In other words, when we multiply by a matrix, what we're really doing is we're forming a linear combination. So what's that going to look like? Well, what I'd like for that to look like if multiplication by a matrix is supposed to represent a linear combination, specifically a linear combination of the columns of that matrix, then what I want to do is I want to see this augmented system as really a new kind of equation, where on one side of that equation, I've bundled together my weights, x and y, into an unknown quantity that I want to solve for. So an unknown vector quantity that I want to solve for. And the coefficient matrix, multiplying that vector on the left, if we believe this statement on the left side of the screen here, that a matrix is a way to represent linear combination as a single act of multiplication, then what the result should be if I multiply matrix times vector is I should get exactly the linear combination of the columns of that matrix, which brings me back to this augmented system. In other words, to multiply this matrix by this vector is by definition to take the linear combination of x times the first column added to y times the second column. And if I then set both entries of the left-hand side of this equation equal to the right-hand side, then I've gotten back to the linear system that we started from. 
So matrix times vector means take a linear combination of the columns of that matrix whose weights are given by the entries in the vector. And it's with that crucial understanding of how matrix multiplication operates when we go matrix times vector that gives us our hook into the next step of what we're about to do. Because what we're setting ourselves up to understand is that a linear system of equations is more than just a set of equations. We can think of it as a single equation. And on both sides of that equation are a vector quantity. On one side is just a vector, but on the other side is a matrix times an unknown vector. And so what we're going to understand is that a great deal of linear algebra, in particular, at least half of our course this semester, probably more, is about solving equations of this type. Matrix times unknown vector equals known vector. So how do I get this vector, x and y, by itself, so to speak, to solve this equation and discover the values of that unknown vector, and therefore the unknown weights, which are the components of that vector? Let's give some names to the players on the stage here, just so that we can more easily refer them. I've got a matrix times an unknown vector, and I'm setting it equal to a known vector, and my goal is to try and solve for this unknown vector x and y. Let's call this matrix, what we used to call the coefficient matrix in our augmented form, we're going to call that matrix A. And we're going to call the unknown vector we're trying to solve for x, and the vector on the right-hand side we're going to call it B. Much like with many things in algebra, these are conventional names. Of course, we can have matrices that go by any name we like. Usually we're going to use capital letters to represent matrices, just so that we can more easily distinguish them from the vectors on which they operate. Note also that we're taking the convention that when matrices multiply vectors, the matrix is going to come on the left and the vector is going to come on the right. There's a whole parallel theory of linear algebra in which we do it the other way around, um, but this is the one that just is the most conventional to start us off with. So we're going to keep this, this formalism for the rest of the semester. So linear algebra is in large part about solving equations that look like this. Matrix times unknown vector equals known vector. How do I get x, the vector, by itself? to solve this equation. So if we're putting our algebra hats on for the minute and just trying to think, well, what's our instinct tell me? Okay. If I'm just in an Algebra 1 class in high school and I see an equation that looks like multiplication on one side, I want to get rid of this multiplication somehow. So how do you get rid of multiplication? Well, we divide, don't we? So why wouldn't we just try dividing both sides of this equation by a? That should get x by itself, right? The problem with that is how do you divide by a matrix? Particularly, how do you divide a vector by a matrix? That's not an easy thing to describe, because after all, vectors live in a universe where the only thing that they know how to do is add to one another and multiply by scalars. And so if we want to divide by a matrix, it doesn't seem like that's an operation that makes much sense at this point. And in general, it's something that won't make much sense in a general setting. We can define it in some specific cases that we'll talk about a little bit later, but in general there's more to this equation than meets the eye, which is why we can spend weeks and weeks thinking about what its solutions look like. So if we don't know how to do vector divided by matrix, but we might know, at this point we do know really, how to multiply by matrices, because multiplying by matrices is nothing more than a way to represent linear combination, right? This matrix multiplication means take x many of the first column, y many of the second column, and add the results together. So we know how to multiply by matrices, even if we don't know how to divide by them. So let's see if we can solve this equation by multiplying. So I'm going to reach into my bag of tricks and pull out a matrix. I'm going to pull out this one. 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2. Where did I get that? Don't worry about that right now. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use my professorial privilege, pull out this matrix and say, let's just try it. Let's just try multiplying both sides of this equation by this matrix, 2 minus 3 minus 1, 2, and just kind of see what happens. I've chosen this matrix carefully so that we'll see that this actually is going to be kind of nice. But um, in general, we may figure out a way in a week or two to choose matrices that are going to do what we're about to do anyway. But for now, I want to put the focus on just the operation of multiplying both sides of this equation by a matrix. So now I've got a lot going on. How am I supposed to understand or to simplify what I have? Well, on the right side of this equation, I have matrix B times vector B. And we know how to multiply a matrix by a vector. So let's simplify that side of the equation over there first. So 2 minus 3 minus 1, 2, matrix B, multiplied by the vector B. And matrix times vector means linear combination 
of the columns of the matrix whose weights are given by the entries of the vector. So what this product means is negative 2 times the first column plus negative 8 times the second column. So let's form that linear combination and simplify it. Well, to simplify it, I just need to do the scalar multiplication, carry it out on each one of these scalar multiples that I have down there, multiplying component-wise, then add the results. And when I simplify that down, the entries I get are negative 28, negative 14. So we know how to simplify that right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we could simplify it one of two ways. It turns out matrix multiplication, and this also goes for multiplication of matrices by vectors, is an associative operation. So that means that if I want to, I could evaluate a times x first, and then multiply the result by b, or I could multiply b by a, and then multiply that result by x. As long as the order of my multiplication is preserved, I can evaluate either of these products first, and then the other one second. So I'm actually going to choose to evaluate the matrix product here, just so that we can get an example of matrix times matrix into this video. How do you multiply a matrix by a matrix? Well, because of the very same definition that lets us know how to multiply matrix by vector, multiplying matrix by matrix is also going to entail taking linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left here. It's just that now the linear combinations that I get are going to have their weights taken from the columns of the matrix on the right. In other words, to sum it up, the first column of this product is going to be the matrix on the left multiplied by the first column of the matrix on the right. In other words, this many of the first column of B added to this many of the second column of B. So negative 2 of the first column plus 1 of the second column. Multiply that out, carry out my linear combinations, and in this example I get negative 7, 0 as my first column. The second column, as you might expect, is the linear combination of the columns of B whose weights are given by the second column of A. So in other words, it's the matrix B multiplied by the second column of A. That becomes the second column in the product. Highlight those in blue. We're going to have 3 of this column added to 2 of that column. Simplify that out with the arithmetic, I get 0, negative 7. So after I've carried out this matrix multiplication, I've got kind of a nicer matrix over here on the left-hand side than I had before. Negative 7, 0, 0, negative 7. I've got some zeros in here that are going to help me out. So now let's take stock of where we are. If I carry out this matrix multiplication, taking x of the first column added to y of the second column, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a vector which only has x in its first component and only has y in its second component. I'm going to get negative 7x, negative 7y. So something really nice happened here, that after this matrix multiplication was carried out, we now have a much simpler to solve system than we used to. And as long as we buy that this was an okay thing to do, multiply both sides of this equation by the same matrix on the same side, the left side, right? then this equation will have the same solutions as our original equation did. And since my x's and my y's are no longer intertwined, all I have to do is divide each of those equations, it turns out, by the same negative 7, and we've solved for x. Divide the first equation by negative 7, we find out x is equal to 4. And divide that second equation by negative 7, we find out that y is equal to 2. And indeed, that was exactly the solution that we found to this same equation when we were thinking of this equation as an augmented matrix, when we were thinking of it as a linear combination problem. Now, we've arrived at that same solution again, thinking of this now as a matrix vector equation. So matrix multiplication is the most important kind of operation in linear algebra for a lot of reasons. The first of which we now understand is that matrix multiplication represents the act of linear combination as a single operation. When a matrix operates on a vector, the result is a linear combination of that matrix's columns. When a matrix acts on another matrix by multiplication, as it did right here, the results are again linear combinations of the columns of that first matrix. So because matrix multiplication encapsulates linear combination, it is the engine that drives linear algebra. And the lingering question from this video is, where did I come up with a matrix like this one that made solving this problem so nice and friendly and efficient? Will that always work? What was special about this example, if anything, that made that possible? Those are questions that we're going to take the next several weeks to really explore fully. Um, but this hopefully gives us some foundation on which to understand what matrices are 
and why the arithmetic that matrices do is so important and fundamental to the study of linear algebra.